Armed right-wing militias are rising up as Black Lives Matter and Antifa radicals begin harassing suburbs. In this video, we're going to take a look at the ominous escalation of race riots beginning to spill out into our nation's suburbs and how over 500 right-wing militias are rising up to defend neighborhoods from the threat of social violence and they're getting the full support of law enforcement officers. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Certainly hope you're all having a great week. If this is your first time here with us and you're looking for some daily encouragement and optimism as well as analysis to help you make sense of insanity, <laughs> you have found your oasis in this channel. We post two videos a day analyzing current events, a lot of some super awesome conservative trends so you can live in the present in line of even better things to come. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every day we together celebrate the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. Let's start with our video chat question of the day. This is an interesting one. Have you or has someone you know joined a militia? Let us know in the comments section below. This should make for some... Uh, very interesting reading. Have you or someone you know joined an armed militia? Let us know in the comments section below because as we'll see in the, today's video, national armed militias are literally skyrocketing in membership and are more needed than ever to defend suburbs from the threats of social upheaval coming out of our devastated urban areas. But first, Let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Pay for the Electricity here, and that's our good friends over at Biotrust. You know, with our rapid advances in science over the years, there are much more powerful and effective ways to boost our immune systems than just taking mega doses of vitamin C. Our sponsors over at Biotrust have combined four of the world's best immune-supporting powerhouses, along with that mega dose of vitamin C, into their number one immunity support product, Ageless Body. Simply put, Ageless Body provides you five of the most powerful immune-support ingredients available. I take it every day, and I love it. And if you click on that link below today, you can now get Ageless Body at their lowest price ever, up to 51% off with free U.S. shipping to boot. So don't wait. Click on that link or go to my website, agewithsteveturley.com, and give your immune system an awesome boost today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here now. We've got some fascinating developments in the ongoing escalation of the race riots that have plagued our nation's cities and urban areas for the last couple of months since the death of George Floyd. Perhaps the most significant development and it's one that we predicted here on this channel would happen. So make sure to subscribe, okay? But one of the most significant developments of late is how rioters are no longer satisfied with destroying cities. One of the more bizarre elements to come out of all of this rioting and looting is that these acts of civil violence are ultimately nothing more than collective acts of self-immolation and supposedly protesting systemic racism, whatever that means, all these BLM riders and looters are doing is actually destroying their own cities and neighborhoods. It's the ultimate act of self-immolation, something akin to publicly burning oneself or going on a hunger strike, right? And we've noted in past videos that the act of publicly killing oneself for political and religious reasons is widely recognized as a single form, a single most extreme form of protest. And so these repeated acts of rioters destroying their own cities, their own neighborhoods, their own communities, their own businesses, their own welfare uh, opportunity, insofar as these acts of social violence and destruction are directed at themselves, inflicted on their own communities and neighborhoods and services and the like, the riots in effect have turned into just this mass act of self-immolation. But it looks like they're no longer interested in that anymore. After two months of destroying their own urban areas, BLM and Antifa radicals are starting to move into their surrounding suburbs. Now, we knew this was going to happen, and it's one of the predictive indicators for what a possible civil war would look like in our nation, which we'll get into in a moment. But we're seeing this as a pattern in a number of cities throughout our nation where suburb after suburb is getting invaded, as it were, by these leftist agitators. 
And I saw it myself, actually, not too long ago. I was in Wayne, Pennsylvania several weeks back. Uh, Wayne is a Philadelphia suburb, and there was a very large demonstration there, BLM activists demanding social justice and the end of systemic racism and all the other cat phrases for which there's really no objective meaning. So this is the next phase in this uprising, what many are calling this insurgency, and it's now going to make suburban neighborhoods very, very upset. And it didn't take long for that to happen. And perhaps the single most striking evidence of this groundswell of opposition against the BLM and Antifa demonstrations is the surge in armed militias that are fast for, are forming to protect suburban neighborhoods. The Washington Post is reporting that armed militias are rising up quite literally everywhere and pushing back against these these kind, peaceful, loving, and noble protesters who only want to end America's love affair with white supremacy and systemic racism. I mean, to read through this Washington Post article is utterly nauseating. I'll spare you having to do so. But these Marxist radicals, who have been responsible for destroying our nation's cities, which were already rotting uh, to begin with, having been ruled by democratic monopolies for decades. But these Marxist radicals are being increasingly greeted with armed and well-organized militias as they try to spill out into our nation's suburbs. And to add insult to injury to the left-wing activists disguised as journalists over at the Washington Post, to add insult to injury as they point out police, law enforcement, is on the side of these right-wing militias. Can, can, can you believe that? I mean, who, who would have ever thought that our gallant and brave police officers who we've been calling systemically racist nonstop for the last two months and who deserve to be defunded and abolished. I mean, but, but who could ever have thought that they would side with these armed right-wing militias? This, this is anarchy. But it's true. We've done a number of videos documenting how armed right-wing militias and police officers are forming a new and powerful alliance throughout the nation. In fact, the far left site, The Intercept, has recognized this to their own detriment, their disappointment. They were shocked to find that the race riots have created a new bromance between right-wing militia groups and police forces. There have been a number of articles, in fact, detailing the thousands of both active and retired law enforcement officers that have joined militia organizations over the last few years. And we can only imagine that that number's swelling at the moment, given how lawmakers were just so quick to disavow the police and start spewing out their defund and disband nonsense. This anti-cop culture so pervasive on the left is only contributing to the surge of militias throughout the nation. This is a surge that's been going on for some time now. Back in 2017, PBS did a report highlighting a noticeable surge in armed militia activity and membership. Today, uh, it may surprise you, there are over 500 militia groups in the United States, more than double the number just 10 years ago. And BLM and Antifa thugs are learning pretty quickly that they go into America's suburbs, they're gonna meet at least one of these over 500 right-wing military gr militia groups, right? Telling him to get the heck out. In the northwestern town of uh, Coeur d'Alene in uh, Idaho, all they needed to do was hear rumors about Antifa thugs planning on rioting in their town for a number of armed citizens, both men and women, to come out and begin patrolling their streets and protecting their businesses. In a number of towns throughout Washington state, armed residents can be seen patrolling and defending their own neighborhoods. In the town of Bethel, Ohio, a town that has only 13 black residents. Nevertheless, about 80 Black Lives Matter protesters descended on the town, but these 80 protesters were met with over 700 counter protesters with rifles and handguns, which forced the activists to leave. And so it's no wonder that reports are coming in that right wing armed groups are surging to the political arena as the backlash against these protests begins to build to a point of critical mass. And by that, it's very interesting. By surging into the political arena, the Washington Post means that these militias have moved away from opposing government and have instead become massive supporters of President Trump. They see the culture wars throughout our nation is reaching a tipping point where violence is not only being carried out, 
but it's actually being celebrated and defended by the cheerleaders of it in the mainstream Marxist media. And they're realizing that President Trump is the only one willing to stand up against these Marxist maniacs. And they've got his back. And in the process, armed right-wing militias are now becoming the new heroes of suburbia. They're being greeted as peacekeepers and as defenders of law and order. Now again, why this development is so significant is that it appears to parallel what at least one counterinsurgents expert believes civil war in the United States would actually end up looking like were it to happen. Dr. David Kilcullen wrote an interesting piece recently which argued that if a civil war were to break out in the United States, and we've talked about this before, it would be highly unconventional and would most likely resemble the civil wars that ravaged the nation of Colombia from 1948 to 1958. Interestingly enough, that civil war began with racial riots in Bogota over perceived social and racial inequalities. Those riots and the violence and the destruction that characterized them were then indeed exploited by their two main political parties, the Colombia Liberal Party and the Conservative Party both of which mobilized their rural supporters to attack each other's communities. And the police, interestingly enough, took sides, and they took sides with the conservatives to take over areas where predominantly leftist sentiments reign. And so here in the States, with this sort of Columbia Civil War as our template, what we would then be seeing is armed gangs basically taking over our cities, while armed militias, right-wing militias, along with police and law enforcement, they'd be taking over ag Serbs, and the two would be fighting for control over our suburbs as a buffer zone. And interestingly, this is what we seem to be increasingly seeing here, with BLM and Antifa activists starting to make their way into suburbia. And what are they seeing that's greeting them there? 500-plus armed right-wing militias with a full backing of law enforcement. That's what's increasingly greeting these radicals. That's similarly to what happened in Colombia, and it's the most likely scenario for how a civil war would play out here in the United States, were it, you know, God forbid, to happen. So, of course, we'll be keeping our eyes on how things develop here, but make no mistake, armed right-wing militias are rising like never before. They have the full support of law enforcement, and they're ready and willing to defend suburbia from anything BLM and Antifa thugs have in mind. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And make sure to check out the latest video I just uploaded on Biden's Kamala Harris VP pick. What a fail. I make the argument that her pick was an absolute disaster as President Trump is indeed poised for a landslide win in November. You are not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.